Hello and welcome to another episode of What Do You Call It podcast. I'm your host, GB. Today's guest is the essence of Dubai, back from his world tour. We actually had to reschedule this uh, because he was pretty busy and uh, he's more than happy to uh, reschedule with me. Like I said, I already botched in the intro, but (laughs) nothing surprised with me. Please give up for Shaheen. How are you doing today, mate? You all good? I'm all good. Uh, The Busted Lip is making a cameo today. Uh, yeah, was that, well as or was that from my uh, tangerines? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, pleasure, I'm pleasure I'm being on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure being on the podcast. It's it's really exciting to be on this and share my journey with uh, all the listeners involved. Awesome, my man. Awesome. We will talk about your journey. We'll talk about the world tour, uh, the buyers wrestling scene, and a lot more. But I actually want to begin the the, uh, the conversation because you've not long returned from the world tour. So I see you mm-hmm. wrestling in Canada, Malaysia, Scotland. How was your tour? Who did you wrestle? And how did you find the fans in each country? Ah, oh, okay. Uh, where do we start? I, I've always thought that uh, a world tour would always be somewhat of a nerve-wracking experience since mm-hmm. people wouldn't really know or understand who this person is or what this wrestler does or uh, relate to their style. But luckily, everywhere I've been, uh, from Malaysia to Scotland to Canada, I was glad to be able to have that connection with the fans. Yeah. And some of the fans come up to me and say, hey, we came across some of your videos on YouTube, on Reddit, on Instagram. So that was, to me, that was that was quite the experience. Apart from yeah. the match itself, just having that interaction with the fans and creating that electricity with my that opponent. They really recognized you from online, which yeah. is pretty impressive. Yes, and that's why I tell everyone to harness the, 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 the power of social media. Um, when I went to, to Malaysia, I faced uh, Chris Weiss, who is in um, a, a very popular Japanese promotion at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was quite an experience for me. And then uh, after the match, I had so many of the Malaysian fans come up to me and say, please come back, please come back, please come back. Uh, like, it's up to the promoter, it's not up to me. That's sick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it, that, that's really good. So mission accomplished over there. And then from Malaysia, I flew back to Dubai for a quick stopover from to head over to, to the UK for Scotland. Mm-hmm. And that man, that was that was something. I really, I really like multi man. How did you that, find the Scottish accent, by the way? Just I have to. Nah, I'm, there's there's a big <laughs> Scottish community over here. A lot of radio. Really? Presenters. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> there, we have a lot of radio uh, presenters. Yeah, Paris, I've so. had a lot of Scottish guests. I love them all, man. I, just, I love the accent. I'm Scottish. Exactly. Like yeah. <laughs> They're brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, I really, oh, yeah, I really did <laughs> It was, no, no, it's fine, man. Let's let's have a nice and friendly chat. So <laughs> it's, it's really cool. Um, Scotland, the only bad thing I would say about Scotland was... The weather. I spilled coffee on my laptop and it was the only day I got hot, hot coffee. I'm more of a cold coffee kind of person or an espresso. That day was really, really cold. So Philly Shaheen decided to get a, a large Americano. Yeah, and as I was so cold, I stepped back into the hotel. I put it next to my laptop, and I, as I was sitting down, it just spilled over. That's why that was. That's why I was having the days. It wasn't charging, so even weeks from now, it's still, it's still not working. But, yeah. um, but was yeah. the actual tour, the experience? I mean, the matches that you had there was that was that pretty good. It was it was incredible. It was really really great to meet a lot of people who connect with the dream, people who want to make it as as bad as you do, people mm-hmm. who just want to get their names out there, people from different you know bots and bits of of the UK, people from Scotland, people from Wales. It was such a great wrestlers experience. Mm-hmm. It got to meet a lot of a lot of the people who came in from um, New Wave Academy um, from Wales. Yeah, uh, I got, yeah, I got to meet uh, a lot of them from there, and then uh, the match itself was was absolutely fire. Wrestling is like one universal language, isn't it? It's just that bond. Like it doesn't matter where you're from, but as soon as you mention wrestling or we watch it, like you just connect in some way. It's just so universal. <laughs> That's what I love about it, and it's allowed me just this podcast itself. I've talked to from people from various countries different backgrounds and different genders and it's just it's awesome man i, I fucking love it it's different in person trust me when i say this yeah. who else 
in the right mind would <laughs> step into a car with a stranger with no contract signed with no you know <laughs> he just stepped in yeah i know this guy from the internet okay fine let's just get into yeah. the venue you know talk about wrestling and that's pretty much it it's it's really rad if you yeah. think about it it's crazy it is crazy we explain like yeah i'm just getting i'm just jumping at the car with some strangers that i don't really know we're going to talk about wrestling and we're going to a wrestling show only uh -huh. wrestling is that accepted <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, Canada. Let's talk about good old Canada. Um, been charting there recently, so I've got much love for the Canadian folks out there. But I'd like to hear about your time in Canada and um, who you wrestled as well. So Canada, the promotion I wrestled for was Santino Morella's promotion. Oh, uh, the main event was, is it? Yeah, it's it's in Montreal. Oh wow! And uh, I I was I was. I got the opportunity to wrestle one of uh, their up and coming guys who's only 18 and phenomenal in the ring, by the way. He's a black belt in Taekwondo. Um, my, I'd say my special suit in the ring is mm -hmm. to always create that synergy when I have a different style of wrestling me. I yeah. like to give that story of contrast from the beginning to the end of the match. So I, I I felt like we we told a really good story there of of uh, an aerial person like me against yeah. a very grounded kick uh, black belt in, in taekwondo, and um, the the match itself was very quick in terms of action, very fast paced, it's like non stop then, uh, very non stop, and we actually got the chance to work with the Hunan twins on the same day, who you know who 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 we've Lamar. just had a show with. No, yeah, month. that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that. Remember that. Yeah, so we had a we had a nice crossover in 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 Montreal, where they attacked me after the match and put me through a table. So, <laughs> so it's just never ended now. <laughs> nah, don't think so. <laughs> what did you find more colder, Canada or Scotland? Scotland, Canada, Canada was minus five degrees. By the way, yeah. Scotland was only about three, four, but. I feel like the the weather in Scotland. You feel it in your joints, in your bones. Yeah, I, I, something. There's something different about it. Nah, that's right. I've been Scotland in years, but I, I do know what you're talking about. Like it just, it, it mm -hmm. might not be like on the temperature that low, but you feel it. You, you definitely feel it. Yeah, I know what you mean, man. I've I've been quite a lot of times, but I was so worried flying out from the UK to Canada. Yeah, I thought I had to go get extra thermals or snow boots or yeah. whatever, but it was completely fine. It was it felt like a normal summer day in London. <laughs> nice, man. Nice. Man. I, I, I'm going a bit too far, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, no I get you, man. I get you. So, I got to ask, so the, the world tour itself, it seems like you're happy with yourself, uh, made some friends, made some new fans, new countries ticked off. Where are you aiming to go next? Uh, I would love to do a show in Africa. Mm -hmm. that's the only continent that I haven't ticked off the list really? I think it's yeah South South America and Africa oh dear yeah well, travel so, so that's the one I would love to do I'd love to do Chile I heard that Chile, the Chilean uh, wrestling scene is booming at the moment mm -hmm. uh, I would love to do perhaps Egypt or any of the up and coming blooming scenes in Africa just to get all the continents off the know. list and hopefully we focus on on different sides and different mm. different countries all over the world. But I am I am interested in, in working. Just to name a few, I would love to do uh, Philippines. I would love to do Vietnam. I'm eyeing Poland at the moment. I'd love to do Germany. I'd love to do. I I, I would love to explore. I'm I'm more of a free spirit. I, I really like to explore the town, the city, the village. Wherever you put me, I'm. Um, I like to go out and just explore different, uh, you know, different sides, different areas of the city, just monuments, take pictures, take videos, just to experience the moment. Because yeah, I don't think people understand. Yeah, yeah. Or just go straight to the show and, and wrestle, and that's yeah. it. Explore the city. Exactly, exactly. And it's not just that. Like even the food aspect, like, you got to eat for the show. Like you got to eat to gym, and then you gym for the show, and then you know what I mean. So yeah. all the elements in your life contribute to, 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 to those 10 or 15 minutes that you get on the show and I don't think people realize how much work us wrestlers put into it mm. 
No, I, I think just especially being a travel wrestler like yourself, someone who does travel a lot and just, yeah, you, know, you have to find the gym. You have to find somewhere to eat, somewhere to stay. Mm -hmm. And then after the show, mm -hmm. like, you, how do you get home? How do you get there? I mean, you're not going to have luxury every time but, getting in the car with someone. I mean, you might have exactly. time to do, but people don't realise like, just how difficult it is. Um, but at the same time, like, me, you are enjoying this. You're yes, learning, and man. let me just say, I, I'd like to thank the promoters in Malaysia yeah. and Scotland in Canada for taking absolute care of me, mm -hmm. provided providing a place to stay with, you know, the transportation and everything was so hospitable. So they, they made me feel at home. And I'm really, really grateful mm -hmm. for that. Just this makes that trip so much worth it is when you get the hospitality as well. Definitely. Yep. That's that's sick man. I have to ask you about a certain fire that you have pinned on your Instagram. Now I will lead the listeners out there to your Instagram and social media so they can see it itself, but it sticks out. I've got to ask, how on earth did you meet Jake Paul and get him to hold one of your belts? Oh, so uh, a friend of mine works in a market influencer marketing agency, and he mm -hmm. had the opportunity to bring Jake Paul all over to, to one of my friend's places. They were out and about exploring the desert and stuff. So I was, he invited me over and asked if it's okay for me to be there, and Jake was nice enough you know, to, to, to say yes. Mm. And uh, from there, we talked about wrestling and I told him about the shit that I do and he saw the belt on me and he's like, interesting. So you do the, the kind of wrestling that my brother does. I really yeah. want to do that too. So I started showing him clips and stuff and he's like, man, that's that's really cool. Why don't we take a picture of this? Just grabs the belt with me and all his photographers, you know, just surround us taking pictures. I'm yeah. like, man, it's I, so nice to, to very, actually do that, very like, cool. you know, to, you know, yeah. to, 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 to give free promotion to, to a belt. Yeah, definitely, man. That's just exposure. I think yeah. you a great hill in wrestling, by the way. And I think a lot of people are just not going to believe you about the story, about Jake Paul being nice. <laughs> he was really, really nice, man, which was mind-boggling to me. Yeah. I thought I'd be meeting the... I'm not going to say what the you word. See, what you see on social media, like this exactly. loud mouth, car the character. Exactly. Yeah. But it's like, oh, he's actually really nice. Uh, I I'm actually quite a big fan of him. I've been a big fan of him for the last year or so. I just His brother's smashing it. And uh, Do you reckon, I reckon you and Logan Paul, by the way, would be a good match? Just how your styles are? And I'm not just saying that. That's, like, that's, like, I think it would that's be on my budget match. list. I really want to face Logan, by the way. It's it's on my, on my budget list. I can list. see that, like, just being butts, like... Obviously, under the partnership of... Um, Has to be here. Has to yeah, be here. yeah, of course. Get your people to talk to Jake Paul's people and Logan Paul's people. Maybe get me involved as well, you know, just have a face-off. You know, just... For, for sure. The, the interviewer. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> no, that's, that's cool, man. That's cool. Before I discuss the partnership with WrestleFest, DXB and Progress, your wrestling career, wrestling scene in Dubai, uh, tag team titles, and many more things we can talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to ask, how did you become a wrestling fan in the first place? How did I become a wrestling fan in the first place? Mm -hmm. I was, okay, I was in a, on a trip uh, to the States with my family, and I think that was around the same time. Did Tarzan come out in 99, 2000, was it? Oh, the Disney one, yeah, ninety nine. I think. Yeah, so I think it was around the same time when I really got into what Tarzan's doing, and I was begging my family to go and watch Tarzan again and again and again, and they they Perfect. obviously got tired of me because they didn't travel half, you know, halfway across the globe to to take a kid to watch Tarzan over and over. <laughs> and then, so I really liked, I really loved Tarzan. So yeah. just to. Just to be bummed at the hotel and be like, oh, okay, I'm watching Tarzan today and that kind of stuff. I would just flip over the channels and yeah. I happened to come across a Team Extreme match. I'm like, whoa, this is cooler than Tarzan. They're doing much cooler moves than Tarzan. I'm, see I'm seeing people flip and do ranas and moonsaults and swanton bombs. So this is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, that's, that's when I felt like the first connection happened. Sadly, when I flew back to Dubai, there weren't really any channels that would air wrestling, and it, it, it was either that or it was it would be too late yeah. in the evening. So what I would do was head over to the supermarkets, and there was a magazine section. I would go over and buy all the WWE, WWF magazines, and just stay up to date. You know, watch Eddie Guerrero pictures and Rey Mysterio and Team Extreme, and just 
just to keep up to date because all I could do, all I could remember was seeing or coming across these people on my screen. But now they're on a magazine and it's very static. So the obsession was bigger. You know what I mean? I'd love yeah. to see them do something. I wish there was YouTube back then. I wish there was TikTok. I wish we had some sort of medium yeah. to, to watch. All you had to do is just literally but, go on your phone and just, you know, you're fine straight like yeah. that from seconds to watch wrestling. But back then, yeah. it's pretty difficult, especially if your country wasn't known to air it on a regular basis. You know, where America can just watch it like exactly. in early times. Like, so, I can't relate to you a little bit because in the UK, we had to tape it at uh -huh. one o'clock in the, in the morning and then watch it. Literally that brings me to the, to the next point. There were <laughs> there were illegal, illegal stores here in yeah. Dubai that would sell tapes of Raw and SmackDown, which I would go over to and buy those VHS tapes. And I would watch them over and over and over and over again. And I still remember to this day was um, all the all the 2001, all the 2002 uh, SmackDown and... Um, pay-per-views i believe it was mostly the tlc stuff that happened back then yeah which drove me mad <laughs> i can so, kind of see it in yeah. your style but we will get into when you do become wrestler yeah i can see the influence mm -hmm. so yeah that that's that's where the initial initial bit of of uh, uh connecting i would say as a child came from and then Obviously, um, as soon as you know high school came to the picture and stuff, I really got to come across some videos of Ring of Honor of mm -hmm. Impact. I was like, okay, this is cool, but it's not very big. Yeah. So it was still in the back of my head at some point, and then um, I would fast forward to you know. Oh, sorry. So. It was that. And then fast forward to my university days. Mm -hmm. This is one of the biggest, 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 biggest regrets. I was I was actually in London. And I remember coming across um, a wrestling school online. Sadly, it wasn't really uh, well made. Sorry, yeah. Greg, if you're listening to this. Uh, <laughs> and it, re it was a turn off. I'm like, okay, really? This is a wrestling school? I'm not really, I I'm not interested. I don't want to, I don't want to go to this place. Yeah. And then I remember fast forward to five, six years later, I told the, the, the trainer this, that I came across the website. He was like, uh, what year was this? And I did mention it was 2012. And he's like, ah, your loss, your loss. I was doing PTs with Will Ospreay back then. Mm -hmm. So oh, before yeah. he got his name out there, you missed out on the opportunity of a lifetime. And I'm like, yep, <laughs> stupid. Thing. stupid You're making thing. Up for it. You are. You're doing well now. But I mean, I, I can see. What I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm really. I'm really glad. I am. And then after that, um, so sorry. But prior to to going to the wrestling school in London, mm -hmm. I I came across uh, Finn Balor on a show here in in, in the UAE. And um, we had a really nice conversation talking about as you will ever do it. I said, yeah, but I feel like it's it's a bit too late for me. And then he goes on and looks me dead in the eye and says, "There's, don't you say that. Look at DDP. How old did he start when he when he got into wrestling? I got into do when I was 34. So what's your excuse? I was just like, okay, I'm, I feel like I'm being scolded by my father. But then the pep talk comes and yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. the encouragement comes. And all it takes is one conversation to go with the doubts to make you believe that, you know, you, you can do anything yeah. in your life if you set your mind to it. And then I'm like, okay, this guy has a point. Been bad. Uh, sadly, at the time, there was... <laughs> yeah <Not> the <laughs> there wasn't there wasn't an established school like there wasn't a resident trainer in dubai yeah which really pushed me to to, to go and explore uh the uk mm -hmm. i mean uh i still remember um i do have family member family members working for airlines and the way they issue tickets for friends or family is a standby ticket and if you don't know how a standby ticket works it's you have to go to the airport Wait 45 minutes before the plane departs, and then if there's a seat, they would let you on. Okay? And I remember I missed three flights because they were full, wow. and they were overbooked. But I was being a pain in the ass to the people at the airport saying that no matter what you do, even if it's the plane tomorrow or the day after, I'm still yeah. going to go to London. 
and learn how to rest. And there is nothing that can stop me at this point. And I went, uh, luckily, it was the fourth flight that finally I boarded and I went to my friend's place I'm and lucky. crashed with <laughs> Yep, I crashed crashed with him, and on that day, I remember getting a, a, a message from a promoter in Pakistan. And I'm like, what the heck? I'm not even a wrestler. Why does this guy want me on this show? Yeah. And I look at my Instagram profile. It was just me backyarding, in a sense, just doing clips and stuff. So I'm assuming that the promoter thought I was a legit wrestler. <laughs> So he wanted me on the show, and I took a chance on that. And I yeah. remember going all the way to Greg. Thank you, Greg. Um, telling him, dude, listen, there's a show. It's my debut match. It's an international show. So I need you to not just fine-tune me, but teach me how to <laughs> wrestle. Get booked before I can actually even know how to wrestle. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then I got to do four or five hours with him every single day for about two weeks. Oh, wow. And I'm so, 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 so grateful to Greg Burridge for, for, for training me, for, for getting me, you know, getting me ready for that show. And then I guess I spread my wings from there. How did the show go? I need to know. I need to know. Uh, I'll send you a clip. It wasn't. It wasn't my favorite, but it's you know. <laughs> you always look back. You always look back at your first. You always um, look back at uh, your first. Please send me the clip. I I've got to watch it. Um, that okay. I, I will. I was still in my mass days, and it was in front of thousands of fans, and I was nervous as fuck. Can I can I swear on the? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, I was nervous as fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh wait till now. So yeah. Is there a way that I could show it to the yeah, fans as well, perhaps? Or is it just a private one? Yeah, I will send I'll send you some clips for sure. Yes. I, I don't mind it. I'll I'll, I'll do I'll do it. See I'll what I do, do for listeners out there? So and then, big, um... <laughs> so it's gonna be fun, mate. It's gonna be so, good. So so that happened. Mm -hmm. I, I still didn't have a job and I was interning at a place um, as a photographer. Mm -hmm. I used to do food photography for restaurants, event photography and stuff. And this company had a shoot in Paris and they told me, sorry, you're an intern and you can't come with us. And I'm like, okay, but I do have family working for airlines so I can join you for free. And they go, oh, okay, free labor, then join us. <laughs> and then... Hello, man, hello. I happened, I happened to join them on the trip, and um, I remember on the day, we got off the, the, the train station, and in front of me was a big billboard of a comic con in Paris, and it had Sting, Ric Flair, and Lita, and I said, I looked at the guys and said, free labor, I have to go. <laughs> I'm just gonna go for two hours. I beg you, please, let's just get over with the project. Yeah. And I need to. Can I pay my flight? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did manage to go. Uh, sadly, Ric Flair wasn't there at the time because I think it was the same year he had his, his, his stroke. I think it was in twenty mm, seventeen. Yeah, about that. yes. yes. But it was like literally it was his deathbed. Then. Yeah, it was quite bad. <laughs> Sting, Sting had uh, missed his flight, so there was a long ass queue for for Lita, and I was the last person on the queue. And I thought she doesn't want to talk to me; she's gonna be exhausted. You know, all these fans are just gonna talk and take over my time. But she 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 proved otherwise. Um, I, because I was the last person, I guess we had that really deep. 20 25 minute conversation what the talking, hell, about, really? talking about life talking about wrestling talking about passion pursuing your passion travels mm. food recipes you, you name it and then she's like what's your instagram i'm gonna ship you a follow i'm like whoa i'm supposed to ask you that you know <laughs> no, does she still follow you to this day i i do i did i do mention these two people as my wrestling parents Finn yeah. and Lita, because I still I still talk to them or ask them for advice to this day. Yeah. So um, that's awesome. Mom and dad, thank you. And sorry to my, you know, bio, you know, biological parents. 
But uh, if I had to choose at this point, <laughs> any <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. child he is. Um... <laughs> No, Dude, you you have no idea. You have no idea. It's it's just I like to tell people to go out there and meet their heroes because yeah. you really don't know how big of an impact they might have on your life. Yeah. Um and how big of an impact that might do to you when you carry it forward or pay it forward to the others. Like the people that I train at the moment in, in the in the school in Dubai, they you 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 have this trait of teaching us how to create. Yeah. Where do you get from? And I always go back to, to these two. Yeah. They gave me the ability and the chance to be able to create. And that's what I did. It's not to pursue my dreams. It's not to take the mental blocks. It's not to be a wrestler. It's to be able to create. Mm. So whatever I did after that was create an opportunity. Create, you know, create a road for my create content, create a pathway, create all these things that are what you see today. Mm. Is that what has led to the uh, to the creation of WrestleFest at uh, DXB? Definitely. Is that what inspired you Definitely. guys to... It was, it was that and a big, big setback in my, in my life. I had a, a very um, unfortunate uh, shoulder injury. Mm -hmm. So... From there on, I had a, a shoulder surgery, which kept me off for about four or five months. And bear in mind, I'm a really, really, really active person. Mm -hmm. Finish work at five, six. I head over to the gym. I train for, for an hour or two. And then I do cardio. And then I go wrestle. And then I come back home at like 10 p.m. I cook, go to bed, repeat. Mm -hmm. So for that to suddenly change... It literally you taken away from you for the for the next few months. It, it took away everything from me because mm. I was working from home. So I would wake up and work in my pajamas. I wasn't able to gym, but I did change my mindset when it came to that. I was still good. By the second day, I was at the gym, by the way. I would go work out. Like, I would the would have that one. <laughs> stationary bikes, stationary bikes, whatever it is. Yeah. You name it. Um, but that did make it did make me really really hungry to want to wrestle. We used to do academy shows back then with about 30, 40, 50 top people in attendance. It was friends, family, friends of friends, and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. But when that was taken away from me, I said, okay, maybe now it's the chance to to take you know take it to the next level because I'm so hungry and I was in mm -hmm. my my sling. I was you wasn't able to travel. Out looking for venues looking for places how we can yeah. take it to the next level how we can do different stuff and there were a lot of setbacks people were stopping some people didn't like it some people were against it some people were a bit nervous what if we fail what if and i told them it's a, just a one-off event let's give it a go what's the worst that yeah. can happen it's it was called wrestle fest for a reason it was a wrestling festival to celebrate wrestling in the region mm -hmm. to celebrate that we have been doing this in an academy in front of our friends in front of our families and now we get to do it in front of a bigger audience with cameras with ticketing with you know proper seats with proper lighting with everything so i have this vision for myself and for the people around me to be able to live out our dreams as wrestlers not in a like no offense to the place but not in a place where we wouldn't be where we'd, we wouldn't get noticed. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want it to still be presentable, you know, that sort of professional... Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I exactly. Get that. That, was, that was the main goal. And then I, I still remember having a target audience for that. It was about 100 people, but man, on the day, we got about 220 come up at the door. Nice. And I'm like... Twice the target. We need, we need to do this every month. Yeah. And it's not, it's not about the money. It's about the electricity. It's about the fans. Mm. It's about, like... But there is a demand for it. With, there is a demand. With they're not our cousins, and they're not our friends, and they're not our yeah. families. It felt really different to perform in front of people who you don't recognize, which mm -hmm. is a whole, you know, it was a whole new experience, which was indescribable at this point. And it's growing. It's been growing. I've been able to speak to... 
Jay, you know, Jay Lamrod, uh, yourself uh, during the chat as well, and uh, MK, main attraction. He's a uh, nice mm -hmm. lad as well. I think it was last year. It was last year now. Forget time goes on. And I just see the growth with it. I mean, with WrestleFest XB, it started last year, didn't it? Mm hmm last It was year. exactly March, March of 20, March of 2022. Bloody hell. Bad, yeah, anniversary. Good timing. This is. Uh, I didn't actually mean it the timing wise. I think we actually just gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, no. Um, and the thing I like it about it as well, it has become the heart and soul of wrestling in Dubai. Not to take away from if there is any other companies or anything else that's doing, mm -hmm. but the fact that you've gotten this exposure, uh, you as a talent, part of the roster, and a founder of the company, you're able to travel and represent WrestleFest DXB, and you've also now within the year create a partnership with progress wrestling probably mm -hmm. the biggest wrestling company in the uk uh, if you could tell me more yeah. about how this partnership um happens hello there i've got a special announcement for my next guest i am the ultimate finesse your girl's favorite wrestler bullet club zone and impact wrestling's one half of the world tag team champions chris bay and you are on what do you call it podcast listen up right now you heard also two sweet awesome so we just took a quick break there but we're now going to discuss the partnership that wrestlefest dxb has with progress wrestling okay so where do we start um the first international talent that had come over to dubai was uh dan maloney yep i've seen the matches uh, he, so he had come over I'm I'm a bit embarrassed though because I feel like I've come up such a long way since. Really? Then. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been it's been completely different. I'll I'll go over that. In yeah, yeah that's cool, man. That's cool. But yeah, he was he was the first person to to come out of the mm -hmm. UK to international star to to wrestle at WrestleFest DXV. He's man. He's he's such a ball of energy. He's yeah. he's great to talk to. Great to work with. Um. We've had a series of, of really uh, great matches. We've had a series of three. Uh, first one started in May of 2022. Second was in July of 2022 when we introduced the first uh, recognized championship mm. in the Middle East. And um, from there on, I believe that has caught uh, progress attention, the management's attention. Mm -hmm. And that was the same month that I had gone to the twenty four seven show, uh, the Progress one in July, and they 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 did see me and talk to me and ask me about ah uh, Shaheen or Shaheen and stuff like whoa I, I was a bit starstruck at the point you know thinking okay there's there's something going on um, so so let's take it to the next level and they they started asking questions about if, you know future collaborations and stuff and I'm I'm always down for any sort of partnership, any sort of collaboration, anything yeah. that benefits me, benefits you at the same Absolutely. time. As long as it's a win-win for everyone. And why win as well? They get to more exposure, new country. Exactly. You with Progress as brand as well. Exactly. So, and, and we just yeah. spitballed the idea of, oh, what if Progress runs a show in Dubai? And it was, oh, okay, sure. But then it got serious. Mm -hmm. Talks and things and emails and stuff. For me, it was just another day at the, the office because I... I organized the WrestleFest show, so I'm used to applying for the permits, doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. But it was the added pressure of, shit, this is an entire roster coming over, so we mm -hmm. need to give them the best possible experience. You know, we don't need to mess anything up, and we need to give them such a good time above everything. You have no idea how much that impacts, you know, the way you view the country, the way you view the city, the way you view the promotion. Yeah. I mean, if if I ask you about a bad experience that you've had at a hospital, you could name so many. But if I ask you about a superb experience, you could only name a few. And I wanted to be one of those yeah, few. That's I wanted that's to be, true. Yeah. You know? And when things go right, you just don't notice. So I wanted to be, mm. you know, to, to just be the perfect coordinator for the trip. And I'm glad, I'm really, really glad that the, the management and like the, the wrestlers really enjoyed their time over here. Mm. The wrestling show was so, 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 so great to have progress over in Dubai of all places. Who would have thought, mm. you know? 
And then even because... before that, they had that, the world title defended there. But for them to have the whole roster on the show, which you exactly. were, by the way, against Tate Mayfair's, um, had him on the show. Very funny lad, after me, like, very funny. And, yeah. Uh, you know, just how is it for you to, not just to be a promoter, to have them in the roster, but to be part of the show as well, to wrestle? That was, that was on its own, quite the experience. It was a bit eye-opening for me, uh, not just, not just with the progress thing, but also wrestling internationally. I, I learned a lot when it came to organizing, coordinating the show, because people don't understand how big of a toll it takes on them. I'm, I'm only saying this because of my previous experience, but now everything is cool. But I, I had a few times, a few moments, a few shows where I was just burnt out. I just, just couldn't wrestle, but I just had to go out there and do it. So you kind of think yourself had... like, is this worth it? You, it's, it's not, it's not the wrestling aspect. It was the organizing aspect. Yeah. Because I, re if I had to choose between one or the other, it was, it was always going to be wrestling. Yeah. It's always yeah. wrestling. I want to be a wrestler above everything else. That's why, I, you know, that's why my friends and I created WrestleFest DXV. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have the opportunity to do it here, to do it locally instead of, you know, quitting my job and losing job security, leaving my family. I wanted to give it a go. I wanted to give it a shot. What if, what if it succeeds? And what if it fails? So what, at least I tried. And that's the right mindset to approach anything in life. Yep. So, Having done that for the first year, there were a lot of things that I noticed on the progress show that were very well coordinated, very well organized, you know, and I had taken some notes and I learned from the team, which I'm really grateful to. Mm -hmm. Same in Scotland, same in Canada, same in Malaysia. It really took a lot of mental pressure off for me to be able to focus on the wrestling aspect, to focus on performing, to focus on all of these things. Because if, if we're being real for a second, if someone goes on and sees a bad match of you, they don't think, oh, this guy has had a bad day. Oh, this guy's pet just died. Or this guy's, you know, just hey, got true. fired. We're wrestling fans, we're just quite easy to jump on that person or the exactly. match itself and not realize exactly. you know, it might have been injured, might have been their night or mm -hmm. whatever. Just, oh, it's a terrible match. He can't work. Exactly. So so that was that was my biggest flaw in the year of WrestleFest because I had a lot on my plate. Luckily, mm -hmm. I was able to to delegate like i was able to have a lot of good friends surrounding me that would take on a lot of the responsibilities for me to be able to, to focus on other things mm -hmm. okay. and uh, yeah and then progress was one of the main shows for me to, to be able to to learn that so not just on a professional level it was such a, a, a good a personal experience mm -hmm. for me I can tell you're smiling already about it. It's it's good though. Like, it sounded like it was successful as well, and uh -huh. I do hope that they can do another show next, uh, not next year, this year. Mm -hmm. Keep forgetting, it's 2023. The show was in 2022. It's understandable. Uh -huh. Get confused, but I hope they. I don't know. Maybe you can reveal anything that's in the works, or is it all going to be tight lid? Like you just the second option. Ah, <laughs> damn it! Uh, I'm still getting those matches out, you know. What's that? Getting those matches from earlier. I think in part one when we were talking about uh, your, sure. your first match yeah, the, in Pakistan, wasn't the first it? First international show, for sure. Yes, I'm getting those clips. <laughs> They're going uh, on the video, so brilliant, my man, brilliant. Um, Jay Lamrod. So not long ago, you won the tag team belts with him. Uh, he was very complimentary of you. A uh, friend of the show, good lad, unfortunately retired, and he spoke about this match in particular last month where you won the belts. A uh, great moment didn't have a happy ending unfortunately so if you could tell me about the moment itself and how was it teaming with Jay Lamrock so just to, Jay is one of the few people that I had I connect with people who grind I connect with people who put in the work mm -hmm. the same if not more the same sorry the same if not more amount of work than me mm -hmm. those are the people that I really appreciate in my life and Jay is one of them so even back when we didn't have shows running, he would always come to training. We'd always, we'd even do crazy matches in front of 10, 15 people. Mm -hmm. um, plan those matches, have bangers in front of 15, 20 people. So for us to be able to connect at a, such an early phase before WrestleFest until this came to existence. And he was actually one of the, one of the few people that pushed for me to, to start WrestleFest, to do it, to 
to even like Jay even has had a say in. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but the the championship aspect of it is like you 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 need to be champion, and if anyone mm. in the roster says otherwise. I'm gonna Fuck. I'm gonna talk to yeah. them because, yeah, because it, it needs to be you and don't think of it in a way where because you're the promoter no no he said things along the lines of the attention that this country has gotten has magnified because of you yeah. you raise this place to a level of prominence that no one has ever seen before in terms of wrestling so you need to be champion mm. when Jay said that to me I'm like no dude this, this guy is a keeper this guy is you know, yeah, one of the, one of the very few that I that I value in my life. So, thank you, Jay. Um, so having that opportunity to 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 tag with him on his retirement match really means a lot, and I really hope, fingers crossed, it's not it's not the last. Mm. Um, it was a very indescribable feeling of two people who have put in a lot of work. Two people, who have, hell, I, even thinking of it, there's two. We represent two different demographics in the country. Again, yeah. a, a, a local, you know, an Emirati, a local from from the UAE, and a an expat from the UK, coming together to form a team in harmony. Yeah, we basically showed the fans that hey, he's he's he grinds and I grind, and that's mm. why we're buddies. This has become his home, hasn't it? That's that's mm -hmm. pretty much what I got from him when he was talking about you know. Russell Fest, yourself, and the matches, and the fact that unfortunately he had to retire. I mean, as you said, like fingers crossed. Never say never in wrestling. I, I actually said it to yeah. him as well. You know, Paige and uh, Soraya, Daniel Bryan, Edge. You know, there's been a few names. Yeah. Here. Austin, for fuck's sake. <laughs> um, exactly. So just sort of fingers crossed for that one. But I'm glad to hear that you kind of have that brotherhood. We we me. share a lot of similar mindsets when it comes to you know how. How we perceive matches, how we put in the work for matches. Yeah. Crazy brainstorming ideas. So it was pretty much very complimentary of one another. I'm glad that he's gonna be staying involved in the business as well and sort of yeah. Yeah, me too. And training and it's not it's not gonna to go to waste. I'm 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 super happy to hear that. Um what I do want to ask is because we've mentioned Dan Maloney, Tate Mayfairs, and Jay Lamroy, but I want to hear about the current roster. In WrestleFest DXB, if you can just give me, give me a few names that stand out that the listeners, if they're not sort of been exposed to it yet or haven't watched it yet, you know who they who they should be keeping an eye out for. I wouldn't be naming anyone in particular because everybody puts in the same amount of work. Yeah, no, that's fair. let me let me just say that these shows are very as DIY as it gets. Yeah, people come in early in the day. People come in. We don't. In, in some shows in the UK that I've been to, when people set up the ring, it's just pretty much setting up the ring. Mm -hmm. But over here, do the, the the trons, the videos, the sound check, the light, the chairs, the setups, the charging stuff, the batteries, you know, the walkie-talkies and everything. I do like all the setup of WrestleFest. It's really cool. Like, it's you can insane. see it on yeah, it's really like just professional, <laughs> especially with the matches as well. Just how it's filmed, it's just you feel like sometimes mm. in the match. Exactly, exactly, and that's that's what I really like about not just the talent, but the, mm -hmm. the community that we have formed because yeah. of WrestleFest. The videographer himself gives us such a flat rate to cover to cover the events because he's a huge fan of what we do. Same thing with the venue owner. He he was a fan. He came to one of our academy shows when we were only 20 people. And he said, why don't you move in to, to the warehouse next door? Try it out and see what you think. I'm yeah. not going to charge you more. And he took a chance on us. He took a chance on wrestling and see where it is today. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people came in together for this to be possible. So I can't really narrow it down yeah. to No, one no, that, that's fine. No, I was just, yeah, no, that, that like, didn't work the question. Like MK, Nova. <laughs> yeah. Um, Eli, uh, Fires, we've got Sexy Sam, we've got Johnny Evers, who's done about a decade of wrestling in, in all around the world. We've had Roxy, the first uh, female talent, and hats off to uh, Kuya Byrne from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, really took a lot of, actively took a lot of 
responsibilities and duties to 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 help. He's refing, he's wrestling, he's doing AV, he's doing a lot of things that you know that benefit Make sure life benefit a bit easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's there's him, and then you've got a lot of the other names, the tag champs. You've got I, mean, I I just I can't name them all, but everyone, everyone. It's it's, it's a team effort, team. which I like. Yes, to say. it's not just yes. the individuals and. You know, you're all united and you're all like wanting the mm -hmm. same goal as in WrestleFest. Day. Exactly. And, and everybody plays a different role on the show. Like yeah. I, I just mentioned, we have one female, we have one guy from the Philippines, we have a, a black belt in jujitsu. Mm -hmm. So everyone has that unique. Yeah, you want know, you know. well, don't want everyone to sort of be generic and the same, look the same. You want exactly. people to stand out, have their own look, yeah. and be unique. And that's what I kind of missed a little bit about some wrestling. I think we kind of. You want the characters. You know. Everybody feels the same. Yeah. But you don't want that idea. You just want everyone to sort of be different, mm -hmm. which is, that's awesome though. But yeah. Is there anything you can reveal? I know you said about the partnership and the next show progress, but is there anything that's coming up for WrestleFest that you want to promote? Anything you want to share? Any plans that you might have in mind or any ideas maybe? <laughs> I would say partner up with different different promotions across the globe to put other eyes on us because mm -hmm. when progress came in that obviously shed more light from the UK fan base. I'd yeah. love to do the same for Asia, for America. Because I feel like WrestleFest DXP is the talk of London, by the way. I've been to so many shows and I've heard wrestlers even talk about Dubai and WrestleFest and stuff. So mm. that's really puts a smile to my face. It's like, okay, that's that's so cool that I've my friends and I worked on something for only a year. We've only had eleven shows, and now everybody in the UK wants mm. to be part. When of they're it. coming up to you and they recognize you, and you, like I said, exactly. they see you on Reddit or your your own Instagram or YouTube, mm -hmm. or whatever content they find. Yeah. So so I'd say yeah, just put more eyes. Partnering up with more promotion, mm -hmm. perhaps mm, future plans. I'd say I'd say just keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes really peeled. Nah, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. Keeping it. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> we'll talk off camera, mate. It's fine. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> nah, that's, that's, nah, sorry, listen, listen, I'm only joking. It's only, it's only banter. I'm not going to do that to you. He won't tell, <laughs> he won't tell me. If he's not going to tell you, he's not going to tell me, all right? So just... Keep, you know, real friends. But now nah, so that's that's yeah. cool, man. That's cool. I'm, I'm glad that like there's plans. Um, I said you're you're gonna be touring more. You've got goals, and it's just growing. And also, I've had you know more, um, some talents ready. I'm gonna have more talent. I'm gonna just keep an eye out. I follow. I've been following them for a while now as well. And um, I'm a big fan. And I'm not just saying that. I'm a terrible liar. I can't play poker for shit. Um, <laughs> no, I, I genuinely mean what I'm saying. And I'm really happy for it as well. And That's just really the fact great. that the progress show really was great. successful. At the end of the day, it's just about bringing up people with yeah. you because I, I just, being solo and doing everything for yourself is not really going to take you anywhere. So, no. the reason I say this is because being selfless is going to take you so many different, like it's going to, it's going to elevate your game by shitloads. Hmm. You know what I mean? I've, I've never asked for anything in return. I, I do go to the training academy. I teach for free. I go and I do the shows. Don't get paid. Barely make any money because all the money goes to the suppliers, you know, yeah. the vendors, you know, or to, to next month's money. rent or yeah. the next month's talent. Because if you think about it, just, just you know, just take it easy. No one, no one's gonna, no one's gonna bug you about. Hey, um, you know when's, you know when when am I getting paid? When am I doing this? As like going back to the main, to the to the point of we're all doing this for one another. Yeah. If I'm going out there and representing WrestleFest DXB in Malaysia or in Scotland or in the states or in Canada, I'm putting eyes on you guys. So you guys mm -hmm. need to step up, and I don't just give them a, a you know. A look of you need to step it up, and I just walk away. Like, you need to step it up. How yeah. do we step it up? You you what do, do it side by side. On? Exactly. How? What do you want to work on? What do you yeah. feel like you're lacking? Is if you know, 
you spot their their errors they they spot yours and mm -hmm. then you have each elevate just you're all equal i like that I, I do like that it's a good mentality that you have yeah. and that you've incorporated into um you know behind the scenes and the roster and mm -hmm. you know who you work with as well um shaheen it's been a pleasure talking to you it's uh, I've actually really enjoyed it today. I think we had to reschedule, fortunately. Um, also, I know you are busy on tour, so that's completely understandable. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you so it. much, actually. Yeah, no, that, that's and fine, mate. Honestly, thank if you. If I want to do a part two, always, always down for that, too. If you have any questions you feel like you've forgotten, then we, <laughs> we wait, can wait till I see the video first <laughs> of you rest your first trip. Um, <laughs> okay, fine. Once I see that, then I think I might have to do part two just based on this. I mean, clip. if it's good, then you gotta give credit to me. If it's yeah, bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. You give credit to London School of Lucha. Yeah, so. I, part of me doesn't. <laughs> no. I, don't, I, don't mean I mean, it's the other way, the other way around. <laughs> part of me sounds horrible. If it's good, sense, it's on right? them. If it's bad, it's on me. But I want to kind of see it be bad just because how you build it up. If it's good, I'll, I'll let you know, man. I'll praise you. But part of me is just kind of hoping for like a shit show. And I mean that with love, by the way. <laughs> I mean that with love. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what a uh, way to end the show. Yeah, I hope the match that I'm going to see is shit. Um, I don't mean <laughs> like that. I don't mean like that. I just mean like, I hope it's funny. But we'll find uh, out very shortly. Um, once it'll be after this episode comes out, so I'll find out and then we can sort of arrange it. But I hope you the best. Wish you the best as well. Uh, not just yourself, but WrestleFX DXB, Jay Lamrod. Hope you yeah. come back and the roster is growing and just wish you all absolute fucking best if everyone can also follow me on my social media handles below actually before you do follow me shaheen where can they follow you sorry i dropped the gun then instagram shaheen on the sky i'm on youtube shaheen wrestler twitter shaheen wrestler you can find out my content my stuff just stay up to date with the next shows with the future wrestling announcements that i cannot mention yet so let's just let's just leave it there Nah, that's cool, man. That's cool, man. Now, thank you for your time, my man. Look forward to hearing about your next tour. Hopefully, it's, it, you come back to the UK as well. I know you've been in England as well, London. I'm not too far, so we can meet up as well one day. I might be there, actually. Uh, maybe a season. So No way! Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah let, me know. let me know some details if you can. Yeah. Not now, but obviously. The, obviously. Tour, the tour continues. Let awesome. me just say that. I'm brilliant, yeah. man. Brilliant, man. Awesome. Thank you. Put your social media details in the description below. If you can follow me, yes, now you can follow me in my social media handles in the description below. That'd be fantastic. Thank you up to date with what I've got lined up as well. And hopefully I'm more, I might have more talent from WrestleFest X, DXW, DXB for fuck's sake. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm laughing. You're laughing about Way it. to end it. Way to end it. <laughs> you know what's really funny, right? I botched the beginning and I've botched the ending. Fuck my life. In between, I've done pretty well. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, now you yeah. know what it feels like to be a wrestler. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? I know. <laughs> Jesus. But, um, anyway, so I hope you all have a great weekend and I uh, will have more guests lined up next week. But for now, everyone, take care and please don't laugh too much at me for being a fuck up. Thank you. I was actually, I still remember. So while we were still doing the academy shows, mm -hmm. I was a bit frustrated with my level of or lack of growth. Let me say, yeah, which pushed me to want to do to train in the U.S. Like yeah. as I mentioned, we we don't have any trainers over here in Dubai, so I I pushed myself to go over to the states. And I had gone there and I'd done a few training sessions in New York and Orlando and I got the opportunity to, to do Matt Saidal for a few weeks. Oh, really? One of the people that I really, really look up to. And um, I, I remember driving from Tampa to Orlando and I was at this, you know, uh, frantic mindset of, okay, I'm in Orlando for a few days before I'm heading back to, the, to Dubai. Why don't I shoot my shot and see how things go? And then I grab my phone and I message Finn on Instagram, who didn't follow me at the time. Uh, and I say, hey, it's me. I'm in Florida for a few days. It would really be great to meet you and catch up. One, two, three. And I left my phone completely ignoring the fact that, that 
Finn Balor might respond to my message. I'm mm-hmm. just going to, my shot, one in a million, if it happens, it happens. Nothing to lose. Fuck it, why not? I've got nothing to lose. I just want to catch up with this person. I want to talk to him, say how much of a profound difference he's had in my life, how mm-hmm. big of an impact since that first conversation we've had, you know. And then go to the gym, leave the gym, check my phone. Okay. I see a blue tick. I'm like, well, what the actual fuck? Yeah, no one has Finn Balor fan pages, like. <laughs> he responded to me saying, tomorrow, 12 p.m., coffee at this place. And I'm just looking at the message saying, no way, this has to be hacked. I go to the cafe the next day, and man, that was one of the best human conversations I've had with a person. I was telling him all the stories, all the things that I've done. The fact that I pursued this because of him, and he was just sat there with teary eyes saying, Mo, you need to stop because I'm really going to cry in a cafe in front of people. So (laughs) he did share a lot of experiences a lot of you know yeah life lessons that are gonna serve me and really that i put into good use when i came to do the whole wrestle fest and everything that i do today and then what happened after that was a few months later i dislocated my shoulder yeah. same exact dislocation that he had in SummerSlam against seth Rollins. yeah i went the part of the buckle bomb yeah that was mm-hmm. He was the first person that I messaged because he has the experience and I was so down thinking that everything would be taken away from me, that I would never be back to wrestling. I would never be able to do this at 100% that mm-hmm. I am doing today. And then he sends me a list of things, very encouraging message saying, I'm going to be in Saudi next month. I know that's a really short flight, but why don't you come down to the Saudi show? And I go down to the Saudi show with my sling on. And he mm-hmm. comes up to me and says, you're giving me PTSD. I remember wearing that thing. It was, it's not a normal sling. It's a post-op sling. The one with, you know, the cushion and yeah. the strap. And I was just there, you know, like, hi, man. I'm here for Finn Balor. And, <laughs> and he was so, 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 so nice. He's given mm-hmm. me his physiotherapist's number. He told me, this is the guy you need to go to, to recover, to do things. If there's anything else you need, you just message. And it just makes me emotional thinking and talking about this. Like, had he not been there, yeah, I don't think I would have had this um, clarity. Mm. You know what I mean? Especially no, no, in definitely. such a dark life. It's just amazing to hear. Like, I've met him only as a fan. Uh, twice and he couldn't have been any nicer and he's actually when he was in japan as prince devitt was actually the one that got me into new japan at the time it was before but wow. and i remember seeing him against um juice and liger at rev pro in london and it was a really really good match no liger wasn't in his prime but i loved it It was a really fun match about 20 minutes and just seeing Bala there uh, prince devitt but just to hear the story just how he's kept in touch helping you he's inspired you you know and just not just kind of fobbed you off like yeah you'll be fine you'll make it whatever but you now have yeah. this kind of friendship with him that's so cool to hear and i think as a fan of ballas it makes me a bit jealous <laughs> i'm not gonna lie um <laughs> that's really cool that man that's just for you to have that connection with finn Balor and for him to invite you out to saudi arabia and you know meet mm. you for, uh, when you was in america that's cool yeah that's super cool hello there I've got a special announcement for my next guest. Hello, everybody. This is Taya Valkyrie, La Huera Loca, one third of the Death Dolls. And you are listening to What Do You Call It? Podcast. Yeah. 